So here we are, the, the last big metal cabinet. So this is the uh, sixth and final one. Um, as I said, it's weird how things kind of get older as we come down here. Now a lot of the newer things, um, while, while they're still retro, the newer things were down there. And now we're back to things from around the Atari 20, uh, 2600 time. And even before, we're going to see some like Pong consoles and older things like that. So first thing we've got here is uh, the ColecoVision, one of the Atari's competitors back in the day. Had a lot of the same games, well some of them anyway, overall it had the best version of Donkey Kong out of any of the consoles back then. And uh, ColecoVision is a really cool console, it's a really fun thing to have. Uh, this thing to the right of it, this is actually uh, the ColecoVision uh, expansion module number one. Uh, which let you play Atari 2600 games on your ColecoVision. So, I mean, uh, how weird is that? So, it's pretty much uh, just like the Gemini. I mean, they had the Coleco Gemini. So, then if you had the ColecoVision, they just made an expansion so that you could uh, play the games right on your ColecoVision. More to the right, uh, we have the uh, ColecoVision uh, Rollerball Controller, uh, which is pretty weird. It seems like everything back then had to have a Rollerball Controller. Honestly, I'm not the biggest fan of uh, roller controls, but uh, it's still neat to have that. Uh, behind that is uh, the ColecoVision, uh, complete in the box, and then to the right of that, uh, that steering wheel and everything, that is the ColecoVision expansion module number two, uh, which was like a steering wheel thing that kind of went into the sides for uh, all your racing games and stuff like that. It's pretty cool. Next shelf down, going from ColecoVision 2, and Television, another co uh, company uh, or console back in the day that com uh, competed with Atari 2600. So, of course, we have uh, one complete in the box right here. Uh, we have the Tandy Vision, which was kind of Radio Shack's version of the uh, Intellivision, their branded version, and uh, that, so that's there. To the right of that, we have the Intellivision 2, uh, one of them complete in the box in the back, and then another loose one there, although it has uh, the Intellivoice on top, so if I move that out of the way, you can kind of see uh, what it's supposed to look like. Uh, but yeah, the Intellivoice is kind of this expansion that you add on to your uh, Intellivision, and then some games, would have like built-in voice features when you used it with it, so then like it would talk and <laughs> yeah, I guess it's pretty impressive for the back then. Although um, it's always kind of seemed like a weird fe a feature to me, but I guess I just can't really appreciate it uh, considering um I, I don't know. I guess it, it's it, it's interesting anyway. Uh, down there, farther to the right, uh, we have another Intellivision. It's it's not in such great shape. Um, but that's just uh, one of my extra ones in the back. We have the uh, Intiv system uh, number three, so kind of like a different version of the Intellivision, and then to the far right, uh, there's the Microvision uh, complete in the box, and I have a few games for that too. So that, it's a kind of neat portable handheld console where all of them use that knob at the bottom, so they're all kind of like Arkanoid style, different things like baseball. Anyway, moving down a shelf, we're moving kind of into the Pong region. So we have the Lloyds uh, TV sports system, so it has things like your tennis and hockey, so all just to kind of different variations of Pong, although it's really cool. Uh, because it also has some light gun games um, in it too. It comes with this really cool gun. I mean, you don't really see video game guns like this anymore. I mean, if it was released today, it'd be like all orange and stuff and have like 40 warnings on it saying that it's not a real gun. So, I mean, I've always really liked uh, that gun for it. I always thought that was really cool. Uh, to the right, we have the uh, Coleco Telstar. Uh, Pong, so it has tennis, hockey, handball. So all those different variations. Handball, of course, is being kind of where you like play solo and it's just kind of bounces off the wall. Uh, it's kind of funny. Uh, to the far right, uh, complete in the box. Uh, Paddle 4, another variation of a Pong console. And then moving down another shelf, more Pong consoles. So this one right here, multi-home video games, just another variation of it. And to the right, uh, <clears throat> Video Olympiad, another Pong console, and then to the right of that, in the box, the uh, APF TV Fun Pong console. <laughs> so, and then, uh, so there we go. So like I said, a lot of the really older things uh, in the shelf, especially Pong consoles and stuff like that. Moving down to the very bottom here, uh, we have some Vectrexes. So these two are complete in the box, everything's there, they're in mint condition. Uh, one of them works perfectly, and unfortunately one of them doesn't work. I mean, there's no picture on the screen. Although it's in mint condition, so I mean, it, it was probably like that. It was probably defective from like when it was first bought, uh, which is really weird. I picked up both of these from a guy who said he had no idea why it didn't work, uh, but I knew that when I bought it, luckily. So it's not like I got ripped off, but um, I got a really good uh, deal for both of them, and it's really cool because you don't see Vectrex systems in the box uh, too often. Uh, down here, uh, just a few at uh, extra Atari things. And over there to the right, um, a box Sega Genesis and a Nintendo uh, V3 FX racing wheel. 
uh, completing the box. And it's a massive box because it's really wide and it goes all the way to the back too. Uh, so that's pretty big. But I mean, I guess the racing wheels are pretty big, so I haven't explained why the box is. And to the left, just one last thing I want to show is uh, this is the CDI box I showed that was in the last cabinet. And it says that Compton's Interactive Encyclopedia was worth 150 bucks back in the day. I always just found that really funny, uh, that, that, that sticker on there. And yeah, I think that's it for the sixth and final big metal cabinet. So to the right of the PSP cabinet is my first World of Nintendo cabinet. Now this cabinet's really cool. And this entire cabinet, well almost the entire cabinet, is uh, dedicated to my favorite console, uh, the NES. And it has a whole bunch of the different uh, boxes and stuff in it. So starting with the far left, uh, we have the Konami laser scope. Now a lot of people might know about this. It's that thing you put on your head and you yell fire to make it uh, shoot at the screen. It's a really silly thing, but I mean it's neat to have it uh, complete in the box. Uh, this thing right here um, is my portable NES. I mean, it's not official or anything like that, but it's still neat to have. I mean, how, why wouldn't you want to play your NES games wherever uh, wherever you go? So despite the fact, I mean, it's not like it was made by Nintendo or anything, um, it's still, um, I really enjoy having it, and I do use it quite often. It's a neat piece. To so the right of that, uh, we have the NES 2 complete in the box, and uh, that's something that you don't see um, too often. I mean, everything's in there, the console, instructions, and all that, and there's even um, an extra dog bone controller out front there, so you can kind of see um, just how it looks. Um, it's a pretty neat controller, although um, I, probably, I personally prefer uh, the original NES controller, uh, but it is still neat uh, to use sometimes. So to the right of that, we actually have this kind of Mario statue. Now the funny thing is, is that this isn't an official thing or anything. Um, I just came across this one day, and someone actually made it themselves. Or at least I think they did. I mean, it looks pretty handmade. And uh, yeah, so I just picked it up and uh, I gave it a good home. Because it actually does look uh, pretty decent. Someone did a really good job on it. Uh, to the right of that, um, we have a gyromite uh, complete in the box with all the different pieces, the gyros, the spinner, and all that, uh, which you need to use with Rob uh, to play the game. So yeah, it's one of the one of two Rob games that were ever released. And uh, yeah, it's complete in the box, which is uh, pretty neat. I don't think it's easy to uh, come by that. Moving down a shelf. We have my Game & Watch collection. I have a whole bunch of different Game & Watches, uh, some in the box, some loose. Um, on the right here, uh, we have the uh, Club Nintendo exclusive uh, Ball uh, Game & Watch, which you have to order with uh, 12, 1,200 coins in North America. I'm not exactly sure how it goes um, in other regions. Um, you have Donkey Kong 3 in the box, and um, a whole bunch of different other ones too. This one you might not be able to see too well is uh, Mario Brothers. I keep it in the bag to keep the instructions with it and stuff like that. But yeah, Donkey Kong 2... Donkey Kong 1, Safe Buster, Snoopy Tennis, Fire, Donkey Kong Jr. This one's kind of weird because the screen opens up and you kind of have to use the mirror and you look at it at this weird angle. It's really neat, although that control pad and button should look familiar uh, from the NES controller, so that's really cool. Uh, we have Snoopy Tennis, not in the box, uh, Turtle Bridge, Parachute. Um, let me move this so you can get a nice look at everything. Unboxed Parachute, Mario Cement Factory, Super Mario Brothers, and the crystal screen version of Super Mario Brothers. So it's actually a complete different uh, variation of it, and it also comes uh, complete in the box. Now let's see if we can kind of stand this up. There we go. <laughs> so yeah, those are my Game & Watches. Uh, like I said, those are the only things in here that aren't NES related, but I mean, they're even older than the N uh, NES, some of them. And I felt they really kind of fit with everything. I really wanted to make sure they got a nice special shelf. Um, so yeah, he displayed them and uh, it ended up looking really nice. Um, over here, um, on the right, we have uh, the very first NES my family ever got. Because uh, some people might know, uh, before I was even born, my parents had the NES. So uh, unlike some people who uh, got their first uh, console for their birthday, um, I was actually born um, into a family who already had an NES. So uh, this is our original one. And uh, yeah, I don't really use it too much today, but I just kind of put it on display in here because I wanted there to be, a, there to be an NES in here um, on display uh, for people to see. Uh, to the left of that, uh, we have a gray NES zapper complete in the box, and also one here uh, just for display in front. And to the left of that, uh, we have the Arkanoid controller, which came in a big box uh, set, which came with the uh, Arkanoid NES game um, and this controller. So it's kind of just like the actual arcade game. You can kind of use that to play instead of uh, the D-pad. Behind that, uh, we have boxed NES controllers, and back then when you bought controllers, you got two in a box. So it's not like today where you pay like 60 bucks for one. I mean, back then, you actually got two new ones when you bought them, which is actually really cool. I really like that box. Uh, to the left of that, um, we have a wireless controller uh, for the NES, which was made by Acclaim, although it's uh, still a pretty cool controller. 
um, this here, just um, rapid fire controller and stuff like that. I've always really liked, you can even plug headphones into it too, and uh, stuff like that, which is pretty cool. On the left here, got my uh, NES hat, and also um, a quick shot uh, control stick for like your uh, flight games and stuff uh, in between. Below that, we have boxed NES Advantage and a four score kind of hiding up there. Uh, to the right of that, we have the power glove, uh, one of them loose and another one in the box right here. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people probably know about the power glove and how terrible it was. Kind of neat though. Uh, to the right, we have the Aladdin Deck Enhancer, which was used to play uh, these crazy Aladdin cartridges. So basically you'd get the enhancer and then you'd just uh, pay for the small cartridges and you'd put them into the enhancer and then you could put the whole thing into your NES and uh, play the game. It's pretty weird, although it's kind of neat. Uh, to see that. Here we just have a whole bunch of uh, different cards. We have some Nintendo secret tips which you could have bought back in the day for 25 cents. Uh, some Nintendo All-Star Battle cards that came from uh, an issue of Nintendo Magazine which I believe is the European counterpart of uh, Nintendo Power. Right here we have some Hello Kitty cards. I mean what do these have to do with Nintendo? Although I don't know if it will show up on the camera but if you look at the back you can actually see right here that this deck of cards was made by Nintendo back in their card making days, so uh, that's kind of a cool thing to have there. Uh, here, uh, we have some uh, scratch cards. It's uh, basically uh, cards from a whole bunch of different games, and you scratch it, and then uh, it, it tells you if you should move on to the next one or not. So you kind of play through like this game of luck, where you see how far you can get uh, before you lose. And right here, uh, we have a Nintendo collector's pin set, and a whole bunch of different uh, Mario themed pins in there, and that, that's really cool. Uh, it's pretty old. And then in the back, we have the Super Mario Brothers telephone. Now, despite the fact that it shows orange on it, um, this phone, it's actually the green one. Now, all of the boxes were the same color. The only way to tell which color it was was indicated on top here by a sticker. Now, unfortunately, the sticker where it said green uh, came off. But this is the green one in the box, uh, which is good because, I mean, it makes the most sense. I mean, it's Mario coming out of a pipe. I mean, green is the best color of pipe in Super Mario Brothers. Anyway, seems the most traditional, so it's cool to have the uh, green phone. Uh, down a bit lower, below all of that, we have the Japanese shelf. Now if we move over to the left and start from there, of course, we have, complete in the box, a family computer, which was the NES, sorry, the Japanese version of the NES. So that's really cool to have that complete in the box. Uh, below it, we have um, a fake version of it made by uh, who knows who, uh, Computer and Game. So uh, there's a whole bunch of kind of uh, rip-off versions that look very similar. I mean, the box are, the box almost looks the same. I mean, they did a good job on it. And the console is pretty solid too, except for the, uh, the different name and the controllers are changed a bit. But anyway, here is what a Japanese NES game looks like. I showed the Famicom games earlier, but that's what Japanese Super Mario Bros. 3 looked like. And here is a boxed um, Japanese game Atlantis no Nazo. Um, over to the right, um, we have my uh, pretty yellow Famicom. I have a really good one in the box, but yeah, this one's kind of yellow. Someone did some kind of crazy mod on the controllers for some reason. I'm not quite sure why. Although on top of that, we have a Famicom disc system, which plays um, some of the exclusive uh, disc system games. I mean, all the games on there um, eventually came out just on cartridges in North America, but as you can see, Metroid, uh, which was originally a game for the Famicom Disk System. The cool part is, is that you can actually save in the Disk System version of uh, Metroid, uh, instead of having to use a password every time. So that was kind of one of the cool features of the Disk System, but overall it had uh, quite a few issues, and eventually failed, and then a lot of the games that were released for the Disk System in Japan uh, were eventually released on just normal uh, uh, Famicom carts, such as uh, The Legend of Zelda and stuff like that. On the left of that, we have another fake version of the Famicom, like I was talking about. Uh, purple and yellow, um, although overall it's still a pretty solid console. And um, it looks uh, pretty much exactly like the Famicom, except for the color. Here, we have the uh, Japanese version of the Arknoid controller. I showed the uh, North American one uh, not too long ago. Here, a uh, Japanese control stick, uh, complete in the box. Uh, this right here looks just like an NES gun, although this is actually just the third party of Famicom. Uh, gun. You can see the plug for the Famicom is a bit different than the plug that was used for uh, NES controllers and stuff like that. And then to the right here, we have a family computer disk system uh, complete in the box. Now one of the things about them is that they actually uh, frequently break the belts in them and stuff like that, although uh, it actually works. So I can play uh, Metroid and save if I want to. Uh, so there we go. That should be just about it for these ones. But moving on down, we have some of my NES 
box consoles on the bottom. Now, to my knowledge, I have every single variation of the NES box, I think. Uh, like, when I say that, I mean, like, I have all the different sets, like, just the normal set. Uh, here, we have the deluxe set, um, which came with Rob the Robot, Gyromite, uh, Zapper, and Duck Hunt. Uh, over here, we have uh, the power set, which came with that Mario, uh, Duck Hunt, and uh, world-class track meet cart that uh, you might see sometimes. And that came with a power pad, Zapper, um, and the console with controllers. Uh, below that, we have the NES Sports set. And that has um, Nintendo World Cup and the Super Spike V-Ball, and it also came with the NES Satellite and four controllers to allow for a four-player play, uh, which is really cool. Below that, uh, we have what was by far the most popular set, and that is the Action Set, which came with the um, very common uh, Super Mario and uh, Duck Hunt cart. And uh, this is the variation that came with the gray gun, which I personally like them a lot more than the orange one. But, I mean, they're both exactly the same. Just the, I like the, I think the gray one looks cooler. Um, to the right here, um, we have just a normal NES um, without any kind of game or anything like that. Um, and below, uh, we have the challenge set, which is uh, just like this one, except this one came with a Super Mario Brothers 3. Uh, this one in the middle right here is actually a, a set I, I don't think... Um, you don't see too often. It came with uh, just the original Super Mario Brothers 1 without Duck Hunt, and it uh, came complete in the box. So, I mean, that's a set um, I've never actually seen other than that. Um, so, to my knowledge, I think I have every single version um, of the NES set, uh, including uh, the NES 2 up there. Uh, please point me out if there is one I'm still missing, because like I said, I love NES, and um, I'd love to get them all uh, if I'm still missing one. Over here to the right, uh, we have a large power glove in the box. So, the other one was actually medium. Uh, we have an NES satellite complete in the box, another four score there. Um, Docking Bay 10, which is just kind of a silly thing that you can assemble and uh, put 10 NES games in. And uh, to the left over here, um, I forgot to point it out, we have some NES Max controllers complete in the box, and an orange zapper complete in the box. So I mean, yeah, I absolutely love collecting for NES just because of all the really neat things that are out there for it. So many different accessories and there's so many like things that people don't know exist and they're really strange just because it's kind of like one of the first major consoles so standards weren't really set back then and stuff like that. And overall, I love NES games too and it was the first console they ever played so I've just always been really attached to it and I just really, really enjoy collecting for it. Um, some things I forgot to mention up here um, on top of this shelf, there's just a few more boxed consoles and that absolutely crazy controller, uh, the Rollin' Rocker, which is just really strange. You kind of stand on top of it, and it's supposed to act as kind of like the D-pad, but you still need to plug a controller into it for the A and B button. So overall, it's it's really silly. But like, like I said, that's just one of those really strange things that it's just fun to collect, because, I mean, it's so weird. And it's just it's always like a funny story to go along with it, too. So it's just a lot of fun, and I absolutely love NES. It's a really cool console. So to the right of the NES cabinet, we have this tower of milk crates. Now, I have milk crates all over the room because, I mean, they're really good for storing things in. Um, and, I mean, they stack really well, too. So they're just really convenient. Um, so there's a few towers of them, so I'm sure um, they'll show up in other shots, too. But anyway, uh, to the right of that, we have more NES stuff because I didn't have enough room for all of the boxes over there. Um, and they're all, uh, they're all alphabetical, so it ends at N over there. And then it kind of continues here and goes N um, all the way to Z. And I actually have quite a few good um, NES games in the box, too. Like, I have some of the strategy ones, like uh, Romance of the Three Kingdoms 2. I, of course, have some of the other awesome ones, Super Mario Bros. 3. And I have my favorite game ever in the box, Star Tropics. Well, my favorite NES game, I always really debate over whether it's my number one favorite game of all time. Although, it's one of the first games I ever played, and I've always really loved it ever since. And it's a shame that the series kind of died out. Um, it only had one sequel, and uh, it wasn't very well like advertised and stuff like that. It was still a good game, um, but the first one uh, will always be my favorite. So yeah, so the, NES, uh, the NES games in the box kind of continue on here. But then below that um, are my Super Nintendo games. Now, I have quite a few of them, <clears throat> not as many as I, have NES, uh, as I have NES games, of course. And there's still some pretty good ones, and they're all uh, lined out. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9... Uh, so they're like 9 high, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 across. So it's pretty much 63 per section. So like I said, not as many NES games, um, but I don't focus as much on Super Nintendo. Uh, these are just kind of what I've picked up um, when I can get them for decent prices. Or if there's something I really want, I'll of course pay a bit more for it. But overall, uh, Super Nintendo is still a really cool console, and I have some really good games for it too. 
and they, yeah, so I keep them here. But below all that, um, we have some foreign Super Nintendo games. So like a whole bunch of the Super Famicom Japanese ones and stuff like that. So of course we have like Rockman 7 and Super Donkey Kong because it wasn't called Donkey Kong Country in Japan, which is pretty cool. And also Super Mario World, which is also have the, has the title Super Mario Brothers 4. I've always really liked uh, the cover of the Japanese one a lot more than the North, uh, than the North American one. And right here, something interesting too, is actually uh, the Super Convoy version of Super Mario World, which is actually the Korean version. And also uh, the European version. I pretty much have every version of Super Mario World out there, because it is one of my favorite games. And I don't know, I just kind of made an effort to uh, pick up different versions of Super Mario World uh, whenever I could. And then, to the right of that, uh, we just have some miscellaneous things, like we have my copy of Battle Kid in the Fortress of Peril, which is a game I really love. It's um, pretty much an independently made, um, well, uh, I think there was a bit of help, but it, uh, it's a new NES game that just came out a few years ago. It's really cool, and uh, definitely check that out if you're looking for something new to play on your NES. Uh, to the right of that, uh, we have the Nintendo World Championships 1990, a reproduction card. I don't really buy reproductions, uh, but Nintendo World Championships is something I've always wanted to play, and it comes in a nice box and everything like that, so I picked that up. And it is quite a bit of fun, and you get your friends and see you can get the highest score and the stuff like that. Uh, to right of that, uh, we have Super Mario World, or Return to Dinosaur Land. Um, it's an unofficial game, um, a hack made by someone out there on the internet, which is really cool, and it came in a nice hardcover case. Uh, it was pretty fun. I actually just recently played that and uh, uploaded it to YouTube. And over here, um, we have my portable uh, Famicom, which is pretty neat, uh, complete in the box and everything like that. So then over by where my Super Nintendo games and my other box NES games are, above that, I sort of have uh, some of my Game Boy Colors hanging, since I have a few of them, and uh, they're sort of hanging by where the uh, wrist strap can go in. So I kind of have a display of those there. They're kind of in, the, in a pattern, and then it starts with the turquoise one and then the Pokemon one. So that's kind of neat. Uh, behind that, I have a whole bunch of different accessories for different consoles, like there's some Wii stuff, uh, some GameCube stuff, of course it's all still sealed since it's hanging from the original packaging. Uh, some Game Boy Color Link cables, um, a few toys, uh, some e-reader cards, and just a few other things too, like neat keychains and other things, and a few controllers down here too. So yeah, just a few other things hanging from the ceiling, which is really cool because I mean it helps save space, plus it actually looks really nice up there, I think. Uh, it worked out really well. So one thing about this room that probably hasn't shown up too much is that there's a lot of things hanging along the ceiling. Uh, now right here, I sort of have a massive controller display uh, starting from sort of the oldest to some of the newest. Now of course there are uh, some things missing, uh, but overall I, I hit most of the main ones. Like you have back in the Atari days, then you move on to uh, NES, Sega Master System, Super Nintendo, uh, Genesis, Virtual Boy, TurboGrafx-16, Neo Geo CD, uh, Panasonic 3DO, N64, Sega Saturn, uh, PlayStation 1, both the one with the thumbsticks and without, Dreamcast, Xbox, PS2, GameCube, and then a Wii Nunchuck down there. So, I mean, yeah, um, a lot of the sort of main consoles are up there. I mean, it's missing a few things like a Jaguar controller, which I do have an extra one I could hang up. Uh, but overall, I mean, it's uh, a lot of the really good ones, so I've always really liked that display up there. So the Super Nintendo games are right here, and there's actually more, stu uh, more stuff on the shelf behind it. Although before we get to that, I figured I would just show some of my uh, stand-ups, my uh, promotional video game stand-ups uh, that I have before we get back to This one right here is for uh, Mario Sports Mix. It wasn't the most popular game, of course, although um, it does actually look really cool. I like how it kind of outlines all the sports, and um, it kind of it looks really nice how it sticks out on both sides. Um, there's even some more sports down there, unfortunately, but there's all these boxes and stuff in the way which are full of stuff I just don't have space for at the moment, unfortunately. Uh, so right here, uh, we have Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Winter Games. And um, as you can see, I really like the way that they kind of stick out here. It's really nice. And overall, it's just a really nice uh, stand-up, I think. Like, you have all the characters down there in the stands. It's overall really nice. To the right, um, we have Pokemon Platinum version. Now, I really like this one. Overall, um, I really liked... Uh, this generation of Pokemon, Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum. So I really like this uh, stand-up overall. I like how at the top has the note that it came out March 22nd, so we can always remember um, exactly which day it came out over three years ago now. I mean, it doesn't feel like it's been that long. Wow. Uh, left of that, uh, we have Babon Plush, given to me by uh, one of my really good friends, Oliver. Uh, that's really awesome. 
Now over here, we have empty Sega Dreamcast box of the second version. And then to the right of that, uh, we have one of the Japanese versions of the Sega Dreamcast box. And it has this guy and all of his crazy poses on it, which you probably can't see because this is in the way. But yeah, overall, I've always really liked that box. And then some plushes and stuff up here. So if we go around here, we have some computers and stuff. Um, so this is my computer desk, my, well, my kind of retro computer desk. It's a mess, but really, what computer desk isn't a mess, right? Uh, hooked up right now is the uh, Commodore Amiga. Really awesome uh, computer. I have a whole bunch of disks and stuff for that. Although, if I want, I can kind of push this in here and bring out uh, my Atari ST. So this Amiga is hooked up to this Commodore monitor right here. Uh, the Atari ST is hooked up to this monitor up here. And then down here, I have something that's not so old. But it's definitely not too new either, and it is a blue Mac with a OS X on it. And uh, it's connected to this non-Mac monitor right here. I'd love to get a blue matching Mac monitor. I'm not the biggest Mac fan, but it's a good computer to use down here and stuff like that, just in case you need to look something up on the internet quickly or something like that. And the keyboard and mouse and stuff come out from under there. Alright, so now we're uh, looking at the stuff that is behind the Super Nintendo games. I know it's a bit of a mess back here. I mean, you're going to see more of those uh, milk crates and stuff like that that I used to store stuff. But overall, um, on the top row here, we have some Xbox games. Now, I'm not the biggest Xbox collector. Um, I didn't really play too much Xbox. I mean, uh, my main console this genera uh, last generation was the GameCube. And then eventually I moved on to the PlayStation 2. Although I never really got into Xbox. So uh, these are just games that I've accumulated uh, over time. There are some pretty decent ones like Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Uh, but overall, I don't have as many Xbox games as I do um, games for other consoles, obviously. Uh, moving down to the next row. Um, we just have some random kind of computer games here. I'm trying to get all the missed games. I don't know, just a kind of fun thing to do. <laughs> get them all. I have a few of them so far. Then I have some N-Gage games. Um, <laughs> N-Gage did not do very well, although it's still kind of funny uh, to pick up some games every now and then for them. Uh, here we just have a whole stack of uh, Sega Saturn manuals. And then to the right of that, uh, we have some uh, Super Nintendo games, uh, usually doubles of ones that are on the other side, but these are just spares I like to keep at hand, um, just because uh, ne it never hurts to have two of some games. Uh, to the right of that, uh, we have Game Wave. Now, Game Wave is this really weird kind of trivia trivia console where they, all the games for it, are, they're usually trivia games. Uh, even the uh, controllers all look like the the Buzz controllers for uh, the PS2. So yeah, they're all kind of trivia games. They're, they're not the best, but they're fun to play sometimes if you have friends over and stuff like that. And <laughs> you feel like playing some trivia. To the right of that, uh, we have my uh, boxed Jaguar collection. Not too many Jaguar games. Although, I mean, you really have to kind of... <laughs> Search for the really good ones, like the ones that are there. They're, they're not that great. Um, I do have some, like, loose good ones, like Wolfenstein and stuff like that. Uh, but overall, the Jaguars library wasn't the best, so I don't have too many games for it. Although, uh, they do have some pretty good, uh, quite a few boxed ones. Uh, to the right of that, we also have some Atari games, although there's, like, one 5200 game there. And then the rest are uh, 2600, including the dreaded E.T., which uh, everyone seems to eat. I have it complete in the box, just to uh, remember how bad it is. Uh, so coming back, and looking down at another shelf, uh, we have some Sega stuff. So we have like Sega CD there, uh, and then uh, Sega Saturn to the right of that. So I have some pretty good CD games, like Sonic CD and stuff like that, and Saturn games. Uh, quite a few good things in there too. Uh, to the right of that, uh, yeah, there's a few Japanese Sega Saturn at the end, and then those ones with the orange ends, um, those are uh, TurboGrafx-16, and uh, TurboGrafx-16 is a, it's a really underrated console. Now, I, t I know I talked about that way back at the beginning, and uh, there's even some Japanese ones to the right so for uh, the CD. And at the far end, way down there, hopefully it will show up, um, are some Neo Geo MVS games. There's actually one Neo Geo CD game there, and then there's a whole bunch of MVS games uh, which work in the uh, multi-video system arcade cabinet, or you can even play them on your AES console if you have a converter to do that. Uh, but we'll get more into Neo Geo a bit later. That's just some of the games there. I have more uh, in other places, and that's when we'll talk about it. On the very bottom here, we have some Sega stuff. So we have like a whole bunch of, um, what's it called, Master System stuff on the left, a whole bunch of Loose Genesis on the right, uh, tons of stuff there, including Action 52 there on the right. And then, on the far right there, um, a whole bunch of the big case Philips CDI games. They're all, like, 
books and stuff like that and things that aren't so great. I mean, there's a few decent things in there, but I mean, as far as the CDI goes, it's hard to find things that are really that great. Uh, and then at the very end, uh, just some of those bubble machines are like video game themed. Uh, bubble machines where you like press the the button and it will like shoot the bubbles at like little things you have to try to get them into like the targets they're pretty neat but <laughs> uh, they're over there uh, just because all right so on the other side of the room and behind the NES games now um, we have more games but first before we go back there um, right here is my CDI collection. Now, I mean, I have a ton of stuff for CDI, and you even saw some of the uh, big case ones before. Um, it's because I actually bought a huge lot of CDI stuff off of uh, eBay um, a long time ago, um, just to kind of get a really good CDI collection and never worry about it again. Um, well, luckily, some of the really kind of silly games came with it too, like Link the Faces of Evil. I mean, it's not a fun game to play, but it's kind of funny to be able to say that uh, you have it. And of course, uh, Hotel Mario and the stuff like that too. But anyway, so yeah, a whole bunch of different CDI stuff. Not all games like CDI, they had movies and interactive books and stuff like that. So a whole bunch of uh, different silly things. And then in the tower beside that, uh, there's just some PC games, like some Sega PC games, like Sega CD, uh, sorry, Sonic CD, and uh, Mario Teaches Typing too, and a whole bunch of other just uh, random computer games, Quake and stuff like that. A lot of older stuff there. So, if we go back here, I mean, it's a really tight fit. I mean, I didn't, when I set all this up, I didn't really make it with filming in mind, but hopefully it works out. Uh, on the top here, we have my, my Dreamcast games. Now, there's quite a few good things here. Um, I really like the Dreamcast. I mean, I, uh, it has a few games I really like, like the Evolution series is really cool. Um, uh, Marvel vs. Capcom 2, again, even though I had it for uh, Xbox. I had it for Dreamcast before I got it for Xbox. That's actually pretty recent. Um, of course, Sonic Adventure series is a lot of fun. But overall, yeah, Dreamcast is really great. Um, don't have too many games for it. There actually wasn't too many Dreamcast games, but I uh, still have quite a bit to go as far as uh, getting the Dreamcast collection up there. But at least I do have a lot of the uh, main ones, uh, which is pretty cool. Over here, uh, we have the 3DO games. Now, there's a few of them, which are just in, like, really bland cases, because that's just the way they came. But then some of them come in the nice uh, tall boxes, too, which is really cool. And then to the right here, we have Action Max VHSs, because you might remember, uh, might remember when I was showing the uh, box console on the, one of the very first shelves we looked at. Um, I said that the console used VHSs, so uh, here they are. Um, crazy VHSs that the Action Max uses. Good, so back on this side... Below the Dreamcast games begins my PlayStation 2 collection. Now, this is the main meat of it. Um, I have a few elsewhere that, I, that I've been playing, like a lot of the RPGs, like Arts Nelico and stuff like that. Um, but what's it called? I mean, uh, my PlayStation 2 collection isn't terrible. I mean, I'm missing a lot of the sports games and stuff like that. Um, but a lot of the games I do have are quite decent and uh, are pretty decent games and uh, enjoyable and stuff overall. But yeah, so overall, PlayStation 2 it takes up this row, the one below it, and then the one beside it, and then also most of the one below that, where after it ends, kind of get some Japanese games and stuff at the very end, and then it turns into uh, PlayStation 3. I have quite a few games for that too. Again, all of them aren't here. Um, a lot of them are in my room, like 3D Dot Game Heroes and stuff like that, because there's actually not a PlayStation 3 in this room. I actually do most of that in my room, uh, where I have a lot, um, a much better TV uh, suited for PlayStation 3 than the one that you see there. Uh, below down here, we have Atari games. Now, I have a few hundred Atari games, as I mean, there's some in front. And then if you look in behind, there's also a complete uh, another stack uh, in behind. And every single row is like that. So, I mean, I just have tons of Atari games. I try to put all my stuff in alphabetical order. I, alpha I uh, put all my Atari games in alphabetical order once. But then every time you get them, I mean, it's so hard to organize them. It's not even funny. And I'm even out of rooms. If you look down below, a whole ton of Atari games um, I haven't been able to put away yet. So, I'll probably try to get some more space for them in the near future. And if we move over to the right... Um, just have a few more Atari games, uh, some ColecoVision games, Atari 5200 games, and some Intellivision games. So uh, that's what's on this shelf behind the NES games. 